Hey everybody, how's it going today? So what I'd like to discuss is what was going on with the Henrik Husby case. I've been getting asked about it a lot, even though I think I summed up what was going on with the case, what my thoughts were, and why my thoughts were the way they were, in two videos I did in the past. One of those videos was, I was wrong about the Henrik Husby case, let's discuss the new information. I made that video uh, after I had received documentation and evidence that had been submitted in court from both sides that I did not have access to prior to, you know, a day or so before testifying. And then I made a video called How Journalists Lose the Trust of Their Readers. I had reached out to one of the journalists that had been covering that case extensively and many other right to repair issues, and he was very interested to hear what I had to say. The, and, you know, he said, here's a private place where you could send me everything, here's my signal, blah, blah, blah. And the moment I presented information that showed that the narrative may have been slightly different than what was portrayed in a light that may be considered negative to right to repair, I don't think it is, but some think it could be considered negative to right to repair, the inf I never heard from him again. The articles were never updated. There was no new information posted. And to this date, outside of my video going over this, you will not hear that new information. That, um, so let's go over what happened in this case. What I, what I believe went on, and why I think the world right now completely fails at multitasking. And what, multi, what I mean by multitasking. So when I originally talked about this story, the way I had heard of it was a guy sends screens to China, he wants to get screens refurbished, and then he gets them back, and because there's an Apple logo on them, he gets in trouble for importing screens with an Apple logo. This was very troubling to me because it is a very standard practice ever since around 2015, when Apple really clamped down on their supply chain so that people like you, you and I would not be able to buy screens anymore, uh, what happened is that the price of screens went through the roof for new LCDs. Like, ridiculous. I mean, we're talking about paying over $90 to a screen to a phone that costs $100, $150 kind of bullshit. So what happened is you had usually two choices at that point. A, knockoff screens, which were of absolute garbage quality, or B, refurbished qu screens. Now, your, touch, your smartphone has the touch screen that you touch, and it, it, it senses your touch. It has the glass that goes over the touch screen to protect it. And it has the LCD that makes the picture that you see. Those are the three components, and then you have the frame and everything else. Now, most of the time, what you're breaking is the glass that goes over the touch screen, which is also known as the digitizer. The digitizer is what turns your touches into something the phone can sense. Now, most of the time, given that the LCD screen is okay, it doesn't make sense to throw the whole thing out. However, the refurbishing industry is a ridiculously low profit margin industry. It is lots of annoying work. It's not even, let's say, hard work like bricklaying or something. It's this annoying, repetitive, agitating, miserable. I, I, I personally hate it very much, and I understand why not a lot of glass-only repair is done in America. You need a lot of ridiculously expensive machinery that may not be very useful when the new generations of devices come out and the screens are made differently. And given the not exactly high profit margin on these repairs, it really does not make sense to put in so, redi that ridiculous amount of work and effort to refurbish unless it's being done in a country where labor costs are slim to none. So what Americans would do is we would sell our screens back to refurbishing companies or companies that would buy them up and then sell them back to China or have them refurbished in China. So you send your screens to China, they will tell you how many of them have good working LCD screens, which that's the expensive part, and then they will replace the dirt cheap part, which is the glass in the front, and that will be that, and you have a refurbished screen. Some are refurbished very well, where they're the same quality as the original. Some are refurbished like shit, where they break very easily. But it is indeed in refurbishing. Just like with anything in life, just like with any set of items, you have different qualities of refurbishing. Now, the idea that Apple could say that because you had something refurbished, and it still had the logo on it, we're going to consider a counterfeit and sue you was obscene to me. This would be akin to if you have a Ford car, and it comes with, actually, let's use a bike example because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about cars. Let's say you have um, a giant bicycle, and it came with Shimano something 200 hydraulic brakes, right? And then you fix that bicycle by replacing it with a Tektro brakes of equal quality. And then you said, well, that's now a counterfeit giant bicycle. We're suing you for that. That would be ridiculous because it's not counterfeit. You just change the brakes on it. Just, you're allowed to do that. Like, the, get, get out of here. However, 
This, what happened here was something different. When I had access to the court documentation, what I saw is that these were, this was not a case of sending screens back to get refurbished. This was something different entirely. What we were looking at here is he sent screens back to, be, to sell them. And then a few months later, from a different company entirely, made a purchase of screens that then had Apple logos on them. This is not what we were, dis this is not what I thought it was at all. And this prompted me to make my video about why I was wrong about this case and went over the new information. What actually happens is that the company that he sold the screens to, which is a totally normal transaction, I'm just gonna sell you my broken shit if you have use for it, was completely different from the company that he purchased the screens from. The company he purchased the screens from is where the problem was from. He purchased the screens from a company called Jack Telecom. Now he purchased screens and he wanted to buy OEM quality screens. That's a good thing, by the way. That shows that Henrik Husby was indeed an upstanding businessman because you can buy the cheap shit quality ones, he was buying the expensive ones. I remember what those screens cost back in 2017 when he bought them, I remember what they cost. I know for a fact that he was, from those prices, that he was not trying to buy inferior quality goods for his customers. He was spending, he was buying the 30 to $50 screens, not the, you know, the 10 to $15 screens. He want, his intention was good. However, what he purchased were screens that, had, that were refurbished, but that had glass that had Apple logos on it. And the Apple logo was not on the part because it came there from the factory. It wasn't like the Ford logo was on the car because they bought the car from Ford. That logo was then placed there by the factory that refurbished the, the screen. So when they refurbished the screen, they refurbished it with glass. And when they refurbished that glass, they had Apple logos on the glass that that factory that had nothing to do with Apple put there. It was a very low quality forgery. And that is what Apple was mad at. And that is something that may, it makes entire, complete sense to me for Apple to be mad at that. I would not want people to be putting a Rossman Repair Group logo on repairs that they did not do. And it's not much to ask that we be mad at that. So, now, was Henrik Husby complicit in this? I don't think he was. It's not like he was asking the supplier, put Apple logos on that screen so that I can screw my customers. There is no incentive from the repair shop to the customer for there to be an Apple logo on the screen. The repair shop is not looking to screw over the customer by having an Apple logo on the screen because the customer does not see the inside of the screen. They only see the outside of the screen. The customer does not see shit on the inside of the phone. I could have MAGA logos all over the flex cable on the screen in Manhattan, in New York City, and no one would care because no one sees the inside of the fucking screen. The, pre, the, the incentive structure to have a fake Apple logo on the screen itself is so that when they are selling the screen to other repair shops or other wholesalers in China, they can, they can screw them over and say this is an Apple screen when it's not. This is not a case of Henry Kuzby trying to screw over his customers. This is a case of the factory in China trying to screw over the people they are selling the screens to by pretending they're Apple when they're not. This is something that I have discussed with many vendors in China. This is something I've discussed with many of my own inside contacts. It makes it easier for them to sell that screen in China, if they can pass it off to the uneducated and uninformed as an Apple original when it is not. Now, you may wonder, if it does not matter if the screen has an Apple logo on it for sales in America or Europe, then why do they put it there if this is only for sales in China? That is a good question. The reason that's done is because we don't buy enough volume to make it worth their while to change how they produce the screen. So they would have to run two separate presses. They would have to press one set of glass that had Apple logos on it for when they're trying to fuck each other over in China, and they would have to put a different set of glass for in America and Europe, where the repair shops who are purchasing the screens don't give a shit what is inside the, the screen. All we care about is that they work. We do not care if there is an Apple logo, a lemon logo. It could have a fucking MAGA logo in the middle of New York City none of the customers would care because they don't look inside their phone. And they don't want to do that. We are not worthy as customers that are purchasing 30 or 60 or 90 screens at a time to ask for them to stop their counterfeiting operation of putting fake logos on the parts, which allows them to make more money when selling in China for our American market. If they're selling 10 or 30 or 50,000 of, of these a day 
in China, and a lot of those sales are based on the fake Apple logo, they're not going to stop doing that to sell 40 fucking screens to Henrik Husby in Norway or 100 screens to Lewis at Rossman Repair. It makes no sense. So I would blame, but still, the blame rests with the company that sells Henrik the fucking screens, which is Jack Telecom. However, Jack Telecom is just a trading company. They're not an actual factory. Jack Telecom is a trading company that I have vouched for in the past. I have suggested in the past that people buy their screens from Jack Telecom. I, unlike many supply companies at the time, they would not tell you where I'm buying my stuff from. I would tell you exactly where I was buying myself stuff from. So while I had a website that profited from selling screens in wholesale and also retail, at the same time, I also told you, hey, by the way, this is where I buy all my stuff from if you don't want to pay a middleman markup. I thought, you know, one of those, it was one of those things where I try to run a transparent business. If you're giving me money, it should be because I actually add value, not because I am a scumbag middleman. But I digress. Even they were not fully complicit in this because they don't even know what's on the screen half of the time. They didn't realize there's Apple logos on it. They are buying it from a factory. They are not making the glass themselves. Jack Telecom did not have the knowledge to make glass themselves. They did not have the know-how. They did not have the factory. They were a trading company. They purchased from the factory and they sold to Americans and Europeans. So it was the factory that is the issue. So you have to keep digging down layers to figure out who is truly at fault here. Now, is Apple at fault here as well? Yes, this entire market is created because Apple puts as much effort in as humanly possible to keep people from fixing their products. Apple clamping down on the supply chain so that people like me cannot buy parts is it why this black market exists. Apple clamping down so that people like Henry Kuzby cannot buy parts to fix devices, which there is a demand for independent repair for, is why this exists in, in the entirely. Apple is complicit in this. Further, when Apple tries to, to sue people in Europe or sue people in America who buy this, rather than pursuing it where the problem exists in China, they are also complicit. Apple is suing Henrik Husby because he imported something that had an Apple logo that he did, wasn't even aware had an Apple logo, that he never requested to have an Apple logo on. They are suing him because there is legal recourse to do so. What they should be doing is they should be going to Jack Telecom and saying, I want to know who made that glass, then pursuing the people who made that glass that had a fake Apple logo on it in Chinese courts. You know why Apple's not doing that? Because they can't. They can't do that because the Chinese government will literally laugh at them. They don't give a fuck about this in China. If you are, if you are putting a fake logo onto something you made to sell it and make money, that is not something that they care about in China. That is not something that's really prosecuted. That's not something that's clamped down on. So now here's the thing. Apple makes hundreds upon billions of dollars off of the backs of the Chinese economy that allows them to pay slave wages and have these devices made. The entire reason that Apple has over $200 billion in cash is because they do business in America and Europe to sell, while manufacturing the product in China. So Apple wants to have it both ways. Apple wants to be able to clamp down on the supply chain to where they're the only ones who are able to have access to their parts so that nobody can fix their products besides Apple. Apple wants to clamp down on access to parts. Apple wants to make money off of the economy of slave labor in China, but they want the, but they don't want the downside of that, which is counterfeiting and people putting fake logos on shit. And that's where I say to Apple again. That's where I would give my middle finger and say, "Fuck you! You can't have it. You can't have it both ways." If you want to become one of the world's first trillion-dollar valued companies, as a result of exploiting the Chinese. The, uh, the laws in China that allow you to pay people jack shit and have the working conditions that they do, then at the same time, you cannot turn around and bitch at Europe and America and European and American business people when someone in China is a bad actor. Henry Kuzby is not the bad actor here. The Chinese company that produced that glass, that chose to put a fake Apple logo on it, is who did something wrong. But, that does, but we still have to pay attention to the fact that the entire reason this bullshit market exists to begin with, that this demand exists to begin with, is because Apple has made a concerted effort to ensure that individuals like myself and Henrik cannot get access to the parts that we need to be able to do our jobs. 
And it's not like we're doing our jobs in a manner that customers dislike. The reason that I have unprecedented business in the middle of what appears to be a global depression and pandemic is because people very much so value the services we offer and value the way in which we offer those services. Now, the problem that I have is that we as a society cannot multitask. It is impossible to multitask. When it comes to what's going on right now, if you watch different news channels, you have one news channel that says these protesters are all crazy. They're destroying businesses, destroying stores. This is ridiculous. And then you have another news channel that, say, that, that actually brings up what's going on and says a man was kneed in the fucking neck in the street by a group of police officers that just didn't give a shit what was happening as people screamed on, you're going to kill the guy. And yeah, yeah, you know what? If some stores got to get destroyed, some people's livelihoods get destroyed. What? Pro pro it's not like protests are known for being polite. We're not able to, whereas I think normal people are saying something along these lines. Listen, the police that did that, I think they belong, to, I think they deserve the gas chamber. Those cops that did fucked up shit deserve the gas chamber. We need to re we need to rehabilitate the police department to where if someone has a bunch of excessive force claims, we get rid of them before it becomes a George Floyd case. And we need some sort of reform that disincentivizes officers from looking on as people do this type of fucked up shit. There needs, you know, whether it's, you know, changing the union or the having the retirement fund in some way be what is deducted from if people miss if uh, the department is sued because of police misconduct or something we need sweeping reforms at the same time that we need sweeping reforms what the hell are you doing destroying the already bankrupt and destitute Korean restaurant on the corner that is a family-owned small business I can multitask I can say that looting and destroying a small business that is family owned and supported, that is your neighbor is bad, while saying simultaneously that the officers in that case deserve the death penalty and that there needs to be police reform. I can say that protests are good while looters and, ri and rioters are bad. The same thing is true here. I can say that Apple has created an, an economic ins they have created this black market and they need to take accountability and responsibility for creating a black market where there is a demand for people like Henry Kuzby and I to have to go to see, do these you know, back alley rubbish deal companies where you don't know what the fuck you're getting just so that we can buy chips and parts to fix your products. At the same time, I can say that the factory in China that made a concerted choice to put a fake Apple logo on a piece of glass so that that product could be misrepresented as if it was an original Apple glass when it was not, did something wrong and screw them for that. I can then also say that when Vice chose to not publish these details when I gave them to them, when I gave them ample time to do so and gave them access to the court documents, is not doing any good because they, they are assuming and, and this is me assuming that they're assuming, so I'm probably not doing any better. They're assuming that if you see that, that cuts against the right to repair a narrative, so let's just avoid that part being shown. I can multitask. I can say, screw Apple for what they did, while simultaneously saying, screw that factory in China for doing what they did. You can make aftermarket glass for these phones without putting fake logos on them. You don't need to put a fake logo on the glass for there to be demands for it. That is where it crosses the line. The problem is that in order for me to do business, I need to buy from these people. And it's, I don't know which one is putting fake, fake shit on it until I get it. Very often, I will buy something as a sample and they'll send something good. And then I'll buy an order of 50 and then they will send something that is bad. This is commonplace to anybody that has done business in this mobile parts repair industry who's been buying parts from China. You know, this is how it is. You buy a sample of 10, they're great. You buy a thousand, then they send you something totally different. Every month you get something totally different. This also cuts back to what I've been saying uh, in uh, these R Apple posts. You know, I've said there are different qualities of parts. There is something that's original that just is used. Maybe it was pulled out of a machine 
that was discarded, that was a store sample or something, I'll take it. That's a, you know, that's a new and original, that's great. If there's something that was made by the exact same factory that made it for Apple, if it was made by the same factory, same spec, same everything, and it has an Apple logo on it, I don't care, it's the same shit. If it's an aftermarket part that does not have a logo on it, and it is a good quality part, I'll take that as well. If it is an aftermarket part and it is bad quality, screw those people. They're selling bad shit that makes the industry look bad. And if it's an aftermarket part and it has an Apple logo on it, screw that because that's also making the industry look bad. Those are the five different qualities of parts. And I am for three of those. I am not for the last two. In the order, I would prefer an, the original part by the factory that made it. I'll take that. If Apple says they can't sell to me, Frankly, I don't give a fuck and neither do my customers and I can live with myself there. Um, now, if we're discussing parts where they, where it, it, they were uh, like, you, maybe they, it's a battery with one cycle on it or a screen that's never been used and on a store sample or something, I'll take that. I'll take that. If it's an aftermarket part of good quality, I will take that. Whether I would prefer a used, uh, whether I prefer a used original that is close to new, or an aftermarket good quality, that depends on the part, the time frame, and how well they're made and how used they're talking about. It. And then after that, I will take, but the two qualities that I do not like are parts that have a fake logo on them, fuck those parts altogether, and the parts that are just bad quality in general. Most people don't have these distinctions. Most people, because keeping track of five different classes of parts are difficult, they oversimplify. They ideologically simplify, and then they create two classes. Original good, counterfeit bad. And the world is not that simple. The world is not as simple as most people make it out to be. The reality is that the real world requires multitasking. You need to be able to look at several different attributes of this, several different attributes simultaneously to determine what is going on. The problem is that very few people are willing to do that because ideological oversimplifications make the world easier to live in. When people view information that is contrary to their ideological views, there are studies that show it actually causes them stress. It causes them mental stress to regularly view information that goes counter to their ideology, to their understanding of the world. But it's something that must be done. And we are in every single part of our culture, every single part, whether it's economics, whether it's social issues, criminal, crime issues, everything, uh, electronics issues, repair, every single thing that there is. We are becoming a society where we are so fed up, we are so on edge, that we default to the ideological oversimplification for what has gone on rather than actually dig in and look through the whole picture. And I did that when I made that original video on the Henry Kuzby case because I did not have all the information. And for that, as I said in my last year video on the case, I am truly sorry. However, the moment I got access to all of the information, I uploaded four videos on that and directed my audience in many of my repair live streams and videos to watch those four videos that I made. The journal journalist one, the 42 minute I was wrong video, the shortened version of it just in case people didn't want to watch the long video, and the, the live stream of it on my main channel. I directed them to watch that because I wanted them to know that I was wrong, I wanted them to know why I was wrong, I wanted them to have a greater understanding of the case. And, the, and I contacted the media outlet that had been covering that case with all of the court documents that I was given so that they could see proof that what I was saying as my updated understanding of the case was indeed correct. I did my part. The fact that that publication chose to not publish the rest of the documents or at least the other part of the story, that's on them. My conscience at that point is clear. Apple has a right to be pissed when people are using their logo and stamping it where it does not need to be. There is a difference between a screen having an Apple logo on the LCD cable because you're refurbishing the original screen and then that screen having an Apple, a second Apple logo on it on the part that you then refurbished 
so that you could pass it off as if this was refurbished, as if this was the refurbished part you put in was made by Apple when it clearly was. However, they need to accept, understand that there's a little culpability there for creating that black market for parts to begin with and making their hundreds of billions of dollars in a country that does not give a shit about trademark, copyright, and intellectual property. If you're going to be the bitch, be the whole bitch. In some way, I was the bitch when I released the story without all the information. I am culpable for that. And hopefully, now, you understand and forgive. That being said, time to honk the horn when I... Damn it. I wanted to honk my horn. I wanted to honk my horn. I can't honk now. That being said, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you all next time.